road may get rough. The hills may be hard to climb, but I started out a long time ago, and there is no doubt in my mind that Jesus is my choice. Do I have a witness? Will you stand on your feet and wave your hands and say, can't nobody do me like Jesus? Yes! I want to call your attention to the book of Mark. As we continue our series of the Let's Talk About Church, it is my attempt to answer some simple but important questions about the church because we live in such a de-churched era. Last week, we tried to answer the question, why the church? This week, I want to answer the question, why we shouldn't miss church. I want us to look at this gospel according to Mark, Mark chapter 2. I've preached this passage many times, but today I want to look at it from a different angle or perspective. Beginning at verse number one, and you found it, say so by the sound of all aboard, needs more time on the ship. And when he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them, and they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said, he said to them, to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their heart, why does this man speak like this? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, take up your bed and walk. For that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, pick up your bed, I want to talk today from the thought this this morning, from this thought, don't miss church. My brothers and sisters, have you found yourself sometimes quoting the old cliche, I have so much to do and so little time. Church, our lives are crammed with so much, so many different things. It doesn't matter our age. Or I say, all of us in this room are busy people. There's always some family responsibility, some job responsibility, some social obligation, some requirement that demands our presence and our attention. We are busy people. Truthfully, beloved, we become slaves to our calendar. And we become handcuffed to our phones, and we're constantly moving about life. Sometimes we, with the increased demand and obligation, Sunday morning worship seems secondary, optional, or an afterthought. I shared last week that researchers have studied and shared that worship is on a decline in America. In the period of the Great Awakening, 80% of Americans attended church prior to World War II. 42% of Americans now find a place in the sanctuary. And as of today, Sunday, October the 13th, after a world health pandemic, less than 20% of Americans find themselves seated in a sanctuary. There's so much that competes for our time nowadays. It seems like all of our children's sports activities are now seemingly on Sunday morning. AAU or travel ball, baby showers and brunches are now scheduled on Sunday morning. Community events and trade shows seem to be scheduled on Sunday morning. 
Our social organization's annual events are now scheduled on Sunday morning. And it seems like now the only time we can find to do housework or yard work or watch the car, it seems to be on Sunday morning. Can we be transparent or real this morning? Everything in our life screams to us and say to us right now. And often we find ourselves being so socially engaged as a culture. I mean, mama, daddy, auntie, and uncle are always outside. But come a little closer. Don't spend so much time outside that you become spiritually malnutrition. Consequently, We spend up placing Sunday morning into the the category, I'll get to it after a while. Often public worship becomes supplemental rather than essential. Our busy and hurried existence will have us pushing the main thing to the side. And I I submit to us, my brothers and sisters, that weekly and communal worship, though it is routine, is where we come to get our needed spiritual checkup. I come to tell you this morning that you don't just need an annual checkup with God, but you and I need a weekly spiritual checkup with God. It is Robert Smyth, the Methodist bishop, who says that God used his worship to transform lives and to heal wounded souls, to renew hope and to shape decisions, to provoke change and to inspire compassion and bind people to one another. The reality is we all need a regular scheduled checkup with God. And the text that our Samonic spotlight shines on today introduces you and I to a man who was severely handicapped. This miracle transpired in a church-like context or setting. The need of the man and the behavior of his friends and the power of Jesus is demonstrated in this text. It reminds us of those of us who have centered our lives and sometimes if we're not careful, we will wander away when we miss church. Why shouldn't I miss church? Well, let's consider what this man would have missed if he had forfeited the opportunity to go to worship. This is the relevant question I want to raise this morning. This is all I, here, here's what I'm trying to answer. Why is it important? What is so important about Sunday morning worship? Why is Sunday so critical that we should strive to be in worship, whether in person or virtually. I'm glad you asked. Here it is, number one. We come to worship, number one. Don't don't miss worship, rather. Number one, because we come to experience God. Look at your neighbor and say, I come to experience God. I'm, I'm glad to see you, but I come to experience God. Notice the text opens up. Jesus is in Capernaum. The text says he's preaching, it's publicized, King James says it's noised, another translation says it's rumored that Jesus is in town. Jesus is preaching, Jesus is preaching, I I said it twice because there's a lot of preaching in our society, but the question sometimes is what is the subject matter? The people came. And consequently, the four friends brought their handicapped friend to see if they could have a God experience. Let the church say God experience. God is needed to replenish us from all of the world's obligations and our own indiscretions that have drained us all dry. True God experiences find us in our natural state, but it challenges us to be more holy. Sunday morning experiences reminds us of how human we really are and how more holier we need to become. Listen, for for God experiences to take place in our lives, sometimes we need a change of context. You, You can't always experience God in your work office. 
You can't always experience God at your home. Your house is too cluttered. Your social meetings are not spiritual. And sometimes even being alone is chaotic. A change of scenery is needed sometimes for us to have God experience. Pastor Terry Anderson of the Lily Grove Church in Houston, Texas says it this way, that God's presence makes a difference between a crowd and a church. And that's why I come to church, because I know at church I'm going to feel God's presence in here. I come to church because I know I'm going to get a word from God. I come to church because the choir is going to sing something that ministers to my soul. I come to church because I'm going to hear a prayer like Deacon Buffet prayed today that's going to touch my, my, touch my heart. I can't always get that on the outside. There's too much noise going on. But sometimes I need some restricted space in God's sanctuary. That, 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 that's why God's house ought to be holy ground. You, you remember he told Moses at the burning bush, take your shoes off because you're standing on holy ground. Let me press my claim a little farther. When we are intentional or unintentionally miss our scheduled worship experiences, we fall into the rut of becoming habitual absenteeism. It becomes too easy. For us to get comfortable in our own humanity, that we become allergic to the divine. Don't hang up on me. I got Star 69, and I'll call you right back. Because when, 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 when we become so comfortable with missing worship, we start saying, well, it ain't that bad. I, I don't need, I don't, I'm not that bad. I don't, I don't need God like that. But can I help you? God can be trying to get you and I to another level. And God can be trying to get our attention. And we become so preoccupied that we don't realize that we have become allergic to the divine. Maybe that's the problem with culture. That we have a culture that's so allergic to the things of God that if we're not careful, that same attitude has crept into the church. And because we treat the church as just something to do rather than a God to experience, we, we will never become our best versions of ourselves, greater thankful, without having routine experiences with God. I preach, y'all. I'm doing the best I can. It's just I brought out here. But not only do we come to experience God. Can I give you the second one today? Number two, we come to receive God. Notice the text says the crowd came for a word. And the paralyzed man's friends believed he needed a touch. Can we be honest this morning? We're all in need of something. You, you, you may know a few Bible verses here and there. Your sins may not be evident or public or known on the outside. But we all come in here on Sunday morning because we all need something from God. about the human body is sometimes the human body can heal itself from its own wounds. Sometimes scars and bodies heal themselves, but, but the church body, our soul is totally dependent on being healed by God and his word. The, these men were seeking help. Every time we come to church, we need something from God. Worship reminds us of our inability to heal ourselves and the boundless power of our Lord and God. Worship is one of the few places in the world where you know what you're going to receive. Sometimes the word we receive from God won't always excite us. Let me speak in plural right there. Sometimes you can't leave church all shouting and happy. Sometimes you got to leave church mad as all outdoors, not at nobody else, but at yourself. Because the word of God should be a mirror that shows you yourself. You know, too many times we come to church and say, so-and-so should have been here to hear that sermon. No, sometimes the right person was here. It was you that needed to hear God's word. What we need, 
even when we don't want it. Come closer. Sometimes you come to church and you and I need to be convicted of our sins. We need to be instructed uh, in righteousness. We need to come face to face with our reality. We have to be encouraged through our struggles, and we have to be healed through our pain. What we receive from God is always life-changing. So, 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 one, should this church because we come to experience God? Two, shouldn't this church because we come to receive God? But then thirdly, you shouldn't miss because we should be bringing others to God. Notice the behavior of these four nameless brothers. They they have friend who's paralyzed. They hear that Jesus is in town preaching the word. They hear about his power, and these men have a choice. Do they become self-preservationists, uh, or do they do an actless selfishness act? It's easy for us to say that these men had their own problems because they were human themselves. But somebody can testify it takes everything, it might have took everything in you to stay here just to make it to work this morning. Can we be honest this morning? It it, it may have took everything in you because you've been dealing with this stuff. Your problems have problems. Your issues have issues. Your situations have situations. And sometimes you just got to force yourself to get there. Somebody said, Pastor, I barely made it today. I almost decided to sleep in and stream today. Pastor, you are talking about me. And these men decided to look beyond their own personal problems to bring their friend to Jesus Christ. Church, we, we have a choice that we, that we must make every Sunday morning. We have a choice knowing that we have some problems, but sometimes we got to not only get ourselves there, but we got to help bring somebody else there as well. The Christian life is not easy, but sometimes God gives you enough strength to get you here so you can bring somebody else. But when you look at the text, they say, all right, we're, we're going to help our friend. But the text says when they get to the door, they can't get in. When you look at the text, the Bible says there's a crowd there. Somebody said, Pastor, I've done the right thing, but now I can't even get in. This, this, This is a reminder to us that sometimes even our best efforts will sometimes be worthwhile. We must remember that our coming to God coming to him, trying to be better, trying to move forward, will always be met with some type of opposition, but don't allow opposition to keep you from your deliverance. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but if somebody has had to be like the woman who said, if I can't get to Jesus, let me just touch the hem of his garment. Because sometimes everybody else in church don't need what you need, and you got to press your way through anyhow. come to church because I'm in need, but I also have the responsibility to help others who are in need. This is what I like to call worship evangelism. Evangelism is this. It's one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. And that's what I come to tell somebody, that all of us in this sanctuary are beggars. And all of us in this sanctuary have responsibility to tell somebody else where they can come find the bread of life. I don't care what part of town you live in. I don't care what car you drive. I don't care what you got on today. All of us sometimes life will beat us up. And sometimes we got to be able to share Jesus with somebody else and tell them, come on, go with me. Because where I'm trying to go, God to give you a word that will heal your broken heart. Every now and then you ought to tell somebody, I found a Savior. And he's sweet, I know. I got to get out of this. But sometimes some, sometimes when, when, when I travel, I ride along the interstates in other cities, I've noticed this thing they have called the HOV lane. The HOV lane is designed for people who have more than one passenger. And I noticed 
in the HOV lane, they always, it's always sleep. They're always losing sleep. For those who are often in the one passenger car, it's always congestion. I thought about that. Beginning to speak to me last year when I was down in Fort Lauderdale on the interstate. And that's how God's word is. That God's word for somebody is that you can get what you need from God faster if you learn to bring somebody with you. And that's the word for us, greater thankful. You can't be afraid to make room for new people. You can't be afraid to make room for other generations. You can't be afraid to bring others to you. Because if you want to get to the destination that God has for you, you got to be willing to bring somebody with you. My late maternal grandmother, Vera London Solomon, she would live by these words. If I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can help somebody with word or song, then my living shall not be in vain. I got one more thing to tell you. We come to experience God. We come to receive God. We come to bring others to God. But here's the last thing I got to tell you. We come to experience the reality of our God. That's what we come to do. We come to experience the reality of God. This man has been brought to an intimate audience with Jesus. The Bible says his friends carry him. The Bible says the door is locked, and so they tear off the roof. This man is seemingly the most urgent, immediate, has some needs. He suffers from paralysis. This brother comes into the presence of Jesus, and in his presence, lean in, he receives more than what his friends had ever anticipated. The greatness of our God, his greater thankful, is that he acknowledges uh, what we see as an immediate, but God is so caring enough not to simply deal with our immediate needs, but he touches our internal crisis. Come and look close to me. Because when we come to God's presence, there are some things that transpire. And the thing that transpire is that God reminds us of who we are. Listen, when the man comes into Jesus' presence, Jesus says, son, look at your Bible. He says, son, then there's a comma. Then notice the pause. All through the text, the man is identified by his condition. Don't run past that. Everywhere in the text, they label him as a paralyzed man. Crippled man, paralytic man. Listen, church, if we're not careful, we live in a world that often identifies people as adjectives instead of nouns. That's that old depressed person, complainer, liar, fornicator, handicapped, unstable, stuck up misguided, sickly. But I come to tell somebody today, saint, your condition is not your identity. I wish somebody helped me preach right here. I said your condition is not your identity. And that's what I strive to do as a pastor. I want to teach us that we ought to meet people where they are because you can't change people. Only God can do the changing. But you got to learn how to love folk where they are. And we have the blessed assurance that when God looks at me and God looks at you, he doesn't identify you or I by our condition. When God looks at you, when God looks at me, he don't call you liar. He don't call you fornicator. He don't call you drug user. He don't call you narcissistic. He don't call you fornicator. But he calls you son. And he calls you daughter. And he calls you child. And I don't know who I'm talking to today. But you better learn how to identify folk as being blessed. Highly favored. A child of God. Anointed. Because God. Don't limit you to your condition. That's 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 tell somebody to take the labels off. That that's good news for us. But when you come to church, God gives you what you need, 
even if, even if it ain't what you want. He, he, he says, son, your sins are forgiven. One of the harsh and blessed realities about God is that God sees our sinfulness, but he always wants to touch our core. The man had a leg issue, but he had a deeper issue than the leg. He had a sin issue. His heart was out of alignment with God. God touched the sin issue. Lean in one more time. If we're not careful, we want God to deal with our sinfulness, but we don't want God to eradicate our spiritual sicknesses. God tells this brother, he says, your sins are forgiven. And when you come to worship, worship ought to be refreshing. It ought to be renewing because God is trying to reform us. One scholar says it this way, what good would it be if Jesus would have healed his legs if he continued to walk in the wrong direction? This will help somebody. God says, there are some blessings I can't give you because I know you will run off and mishandle the blessing that I give you. So God says, I got to deal with the root stuff in your life so that you can be able to handle the blessings I'm going to give you. God says, you can't miss your Sunday checkup because God says, there's some blessings I got. Put your name on it. And you gotta, I got to make sure that when I bless you, you don't forget about me. That when I bless you, you won't forget about his church. Is there anybody in here that can say, anyway, you bless me, Lord. I, I, I got to get out of here. I, I, I got to cut across the field. But, but child of God, when we come in here on Sunday morning, we don't come in here because we perfect. But we come in here because we all got an issue. All sin. And we can't fix it ourselves. We only got to come see the doctor. Because every now and then, <laughs> I may lift up holy hands on Sunday. But on Monday, I might fall down. But I got to get back up again. It, I, I'm in my seat. But it, it, it reminds me of, of when a baby is learning to walk. Sister Stephanie, when babies are learning to walk, you, 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 you're a mother. They, they wobble. And then sometimes they fall. They scare themselves. And even sometimes their parents are scared. But they learn very quickly that if I'm going to walk, I got to get back up again. Have a good day, great and thankful. May the Lord bless you real good. But I come to tell you today, on my way to the Fed, that you may wobble on Sunday mornings. You may wobble in here on during the week. You may have been wobbling since January. But don't miss church. Keep on coming. <laughs> Keep on serving. <laughs> Keep on singing. <laughs> Keep on praying. <laughs> because sooner or later, <laughs> I'll start getting my balance. <laughs> because God's word <laughs> will tell me <laughs> that weeping may <laughs> endure for a night. <laughs> but joy... <laughs> will come in the morning, have a good day. But God's word will tell me he shall supply my needs. But I'm going to keep on coming. His word will say the Lord is my shepherd. But I'm going to keep on coming. His word says the Lord is my light and my salvation, but I'm going to keep on coming because some folks would rather have houses and lands. Some folks would have silver and gold, and these things they treasure and forget about their soul. But I've decided to follow Jesus and make Jesus my choice. The road may get rough. The hills may be hard to climb. But I started out a long time ago. And there is no doubt in my mind that Jesus...
is my choice. Do I have a witness? Will you stand on your feet and wave your hands and say, can't nobody do me like Jesus? Yes. 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 I can't hear you. You didn't come to church for me. We take smoke breaks. We take lunch breaks. And we take a praise break. And give God praise. Because we come to experience God. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. Yes. Yes. Ah. I know he's all right. Don't look at me, you ought to praise him. You didn't come to experience Solomon. You came to experience God. Lift up your hands. Open up your mouth. I don't know what you need from God, but you better tell God right now. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Come on, let me hear you. Tell God thank you. <laughs> 